Hello, and thank you to the International Society of Anesthetic Pharmacology for this opportunity to present my work and for the award for this abstract, as well as the kind monetary award which was donated to Stanford University in the name of Mohamed Naguib, a valued colleague in whose memory the award was made. Today I want to talk to you about my latest application of computational methods involving alchemical free energy perturbation calculations to create a more robust set of correlations between anesthetic protein binding energies and their anesthetic potencies. We begin by discussing the free energy of ligand binding, in this case the free ligand and the receptor versus the receptor ligand complex, which requires a consideration of both enthalpy and entropy as demonstrated by this first equation. Free energy is also logarithmically related to the equilibrium constant and drug concentrations, as can be seen in the next equation. The relative potencies of two ligands can therefore be compared by considering the differences between their free energies of binding, and this can be graphically represented in a plot of log of EC50 versus delta G. However, there are great difficulties with the calculation of entropies, requiring us to initially resort to approximations involving enthalpies alone, under the assumption that within a given series of similar compounds, a comparison would allow entropies to cancel out. So we started with this model of the gamma amino butyric acid receptor that we had built through our validated methods of molecular and homology modeling that has now advanced to a nearly identical structure identified through cryo-electron microscopy. This model of the ligand-gated ion channel is composed of a pentamer of subunits that are symmetrically arranged around the central ion pore shown here in panel B. There is an extracellular domain that binds GABA in between subunits, and there's a transmembrane domain which is composed of bundles of alpha helical tetramers. The anesthetic binding site is located between these four helic bundles in the outer third of the transmembrane domain and is readily accessible by diffusion through the membrane itself. This is the set of 11 propofol congeners that were docked into the GABA receptor structural model in the anesthetic binding site. The original set was from our previous publications, with the additional five now available for incorporation. In particular, for the results of the flexible C-Docker calculations on the left, the original six propofol congeners showed a very high correlation of the log of EC50 for GABA potentiation versus the C-Docker derived interaction energy. However, when adding five more propofol congeners, it was clear that the use of the approximate methods implemented in the flexible C-Docker algorithm began to break down. So in this study, we then employed a more expensive but more robust methodology to incorporate the effects of the entropy of binding. The method used is called alchemical free energy perturbation simulation and is designed to calculate the change in free energy during an alchemical transformation as one ligand is morphed into another. If two such calculations are performed, one in the protein binding pocket and another one in the solvent, the difference between the two free energies is equivalent to the relative binding free energy between the two ligands. This figure shows this concept by depicting two ligands, namely ligand A and ligand B, in the complex and free solvated states. The relative binding affinity of the two ligands equals delta G2 minus delta G1, where delta G1 and delta G2 correspond to the physical processes of transferring the ligands from their solvated environments into the protein. These two values are very expensive to compute though. Instead, in relative free energy calculations, one computes the more easily computed alchemical quantities, delta G3 and delta G4, which are the free energies of chemically transforming ligand A into ligand B in the solvent and protein environments respectively. From the diagram, the relative binding free energy, delta G2 minus delta G1, is actually equal to delta G4 minus delta G3 by conservation of energy around this circuit. In doing so, and plotting the results of the log of the EC50 for GABA potentiation versus the relative delta G of binding, with all delta Gs here being calculated relative to that of propofol, one can readily see a reasonable log linear correlation between the EC50 for GABA potentiation and the relative delta G of binding for 11 propofol congeners with one outlier. On the right, with the one outlier removed, the remaining 10 propofol congeners show an even better correlation. Reasons for outliers, despite the more robust free energy calculation, are many, including alternate binding poses within a single binding site, as well as additional binding sites. In our previous work, we have shown that approximate molecular docking calculations can be implemented for high throughput screens of very large ligand databases. However, these use grossly favorable characteristics like molecular size and shape, which may not consider the subtle characteristics of binding for compound classes such as anesthetics. Such approximate techniques are very fast computationally and can be used to screen large databases. However, when it comes to making more accurate predictions of relative binding affinities involving more subtle binding differences, especially within a congeneric series of propofol compounds, the alchemical free energy perturbation calculation can be further used to assess these effects. 
Such calculations are applicable to modifications of new classes of anesthetics with novel chemical cores, such as our recently patented new class of anesthetic agents. In, sil in silico analyses also allow for more efficient implementation of otherwise costly in vitro and in vivo experimentation by placing initial limits on the subsequent experiments to be performed. Additionally, not only do we now have access to more computationally powerful hardware resources, but the software code written for these calculations can also be compiled to run on graphical processing units or GPUs, making it far less computationally expensive than ever before and essentially running a mini supercomputer on a desktop. Such calculations have become very popular for drug design and are the basis for new major investments in the pharmaceutical industry. I thank you for your attention and would be happy to answer any questions here or by email.